Welcome to All Grown Up Now, Tales of a Checkered Past. I'm Kenneth D. King, podcasting from my studio near Union Square in New York City. This podcast is an evolution of the tale, All Grown Up Now, A Friendship in Three Acts. This is season two, and it's called Tales of a Checkered Past. It's a collection of short stories from my salad days on up to the present. In each podcast, another self-contained story will be presented. Enjoy. Episode 89 is a meditation on the idea of spheres of influence. I've been thinking recently about the idea of spheres of influence. Now, this is not about the concept of spheres of influence and how they impact politics around the globe. This is on a smaller, more interpersonal scale. I was thinking about how one person, through their effect on those around them, could create change on a larger scale. The time was the mid-1990s. I was living in San Francisco at the time, and I had just started traveling around the country to teach different aspects of sewing. On one particular trip, I found myself in St. Louis. Now, I'd never been there before, but I assumed that the people there would be quite a lot like the people I was raised around in Kansas. Now, before this trip, I'd had a talk with someone who regarded themselves as a big deal in the sewing world. This person advised me to not talk about the gay thing, especially in the middle of the country. I could teach all I wanted, but even alluding to being gay, well, this person regarded it as a career killer. Now, as an aside, my friend Stuart tells me that people can see that I'm gay in the satellite photos from space. So the very idea that I could pass as straight, that was absurd. Moreover, I had no interest in hiding it. People had eyes and ears, and if they didn't like me, they didn't have to attend my classes. As I said, it was after this conversation that I found myself in St. Louis. The morning of the class, I learned that there would be a local celebrity attending, Eunice Farmer. Now, I shouldn't call her just a local celebrity. Eunice Farmer was a nationally syndicated newspaper columnist who wrote about sewing. She also wrote books on sewing, and she owned a very posh fabric store in the area. In other words, she was a big deal, and she would be attending my class. Much excitement on the part of the organizers of this event. When I entered the classroom that morning... I immediately knew which one of the ladies was Eunice. Let me give you a little description of Eunice Farmer. Eunice Farmer was a gal of a certain age. She wore her hair in a blonde version of the Ann Miller flip. She had gold hoop earrings, gold rimmed glasses, and, as I remember an outfit that was tasteful tones of beige with just the right accent of a leopard print scarf. She had good manicure. She had good shoes. When talking to her later, Eunice confessed that she had only ever driven convertibles, probably red, and that she had a lead foot. All in all, she was larger than life, my kind of gal. Now that day, Eunice was holding court when I walked into the room, Not in a bad way. Gracious. I was introduced to her, and she turned on her thousand-watt smile. I was dazzled and a little nervous. I began the class, and all went well. About halfway through, I took a small break where I got to chat with the ladies. Eunice didn't monopolize the conversation. She just chimed in like one of the gals. She started telling the ladies and me a funny story about one of her ex-husbands, which had them all in stitches. 
I then chimed in with a little anecdote where I referred to my ex-husband. And this is where I saw how a sphere of influence works on a personal level. This happened in a flash, but it amazed me how much can happen in an instant. Now, after I mentioned my ex-husband, Eunice stopped short. When she stopped short, all of the other ladies did as well. In unison, they all looked to Eunice to gauge her reaction. It was fascinating. I watched Eunice's eyes. I could see there was a calculation going on behind them. It went something like this, as I could see. I have an ex-husband. He has an ex-husband. There was a pause, and then I saw it's all the same. Right then, Eunice let out a laugh at what I had just said. Relieved, the ladies also let out a laugh because they saw that it was okay with Eunice. Now, this all happened in an instant. It was fascinating. We then got back to work, and the class ended well. Later, the organizer confessed that she was a little nervous about having me teach there because, well, this was St. Louis, not San Francisco, where I could be a big old homo all the time. That was unspoken. But... When Eunice just laughed at what I said, her reaction pronounced me okay to those in her sphere of influence. Her reaction cleared the way for the ladies in that class to listen to what I had to teach and not get hung up with who I was as a person. And it was Eunice and others who knew her who continued to hire me to teach in other parts of the country. They said I was okay, and therefore I was. In my life, there have been other people who were the centers of their particular sphere of influence who cleared the way for me in my career. For example, there was Mindy of the posh L.A. boutique Maxfield. Now, Mindy wasn't the owner or the buyer, but she was the head salesperson. Mindy saw my work, understood that it was the next big thing when the others didn't, and insisted they buy it. She got on the phone to all of her customers, and she sold through everything in 24 hours. My design career was launched. Then there was Sandra Betzina, another sewing columnist and sewing book author, who, after visiting my studio, leaned on the local sewing school to have me teach. This started my teaching business. Sandra also leaned on Threads magazine to publish my first article, which launched my writing career. And then there was Nancy Fleming, Miss America 1961, whose talent was sewing, hand to God, who insisted the producers choose me over the other candidates to be on the PBS TV sewing show, Sewing Today, 26 episodes. And that launched me into video and book publishing. Looking back, for me, it's always been powerful women who were at the center of those spheres of influence. It was because they saw whatever they saw in me, and they said yes. Their particular sphere of influence then opened up opportunities. So yes, there are spheres of influence politically and globally, but that idea works on the personal level as well, which means that one person can affect change even if they can't see the direct result of it. Something to think about. Thanks for listening. You can get the audiobook all grown up now on iTunes, Audible, and Amazon, or from my website, allgrownupnow.com. You can
and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you have any questions, you can reach me through the website allgrownupnow.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Kenneth D. King, on Facebook at Kenneth D. King Design, or on my main website, KennethDKing.com.